Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining Cybersecurity Career Talks today. Uh, I have with me Mohan Yelnado and Kevin Gellerin, and uh, they are going to talk with us and show us how to uh, transition into a career in uh, bug bounty hunting Hi, or how Thank to you so much for have it as a separate career talks today. Uh, I have with me Mohan. No, go ahead. My problem, sorry. <laughs> I muted the YouTube now. Okay. Yes, it is live, live now. Yeah. No, don't worry about it. So thank you so much for joining uh, for... Okay. Thanks everyone. Thank you for joining Cybersecurity Career Talks. I have with me. Mohan Yelnadu and uh, Kevin Gellerin. Uh, and I have with me Kevin and um, Mohan today, and we are going to talk about. Uh, is uh, a bug bounty hunting, can it be a career or is it just some kind of like a uh, hobby or something that you do on the side? Is it a side hustle? And if you want to make it into a career, uh, what is the na natural progression? Can you get a job or how do you start? How do you learn? What kind of education is required? Do you need to have some kind of special hardware? What kind of open source or uh, tools that you need? And uh, what kind of training is required? So thanks so much. And uh, I will read out our disclaimer so we don't get trouble. <laughs> OK. Uh, the views expressed in this presentation and during the session are the personal opinions of the participants and do not reflect the official policy or position of their respective employers. This discussion is a volunteer-led effort to contribute to the profession and pay forward the many kindnesses and instances of support and guidance that the participants have received in the course of their career. And I will introduce my first guest, Kevin Gellerin uh, leads the Yes We Hack uh, across Asia Pacific. He advises clients on not just the business value of bug bounty, but also how security teams can execute programs in the most optimal and sustainable and effective manner. Kevin moved to uh, Singapore over a de decade ago and has more than 15 years experience of, uh, in IT security. His pro uh, previous roles included pen, pen testing and security research and R&D team lead. I have uh, Mohan with me. Mohan is uh, known as the application security artist. He is join us, joining us again today. And he is an experienced and curious pen tester turned DevOps consultants, consultant with AppSec and consulting experience in banking, insurance, manufacturing, telecom, and retail domains with stakeholders across Australia, US, Germany, France, Netherlands, Singapore, and India. He has been associated with IT and IT security for more than 20 years. Thank you so much for joining us again, Mohan. And uh, I am your host, your coach, your teacher, as we explore different cybersecurity domains until you find your dream job. And this is the agenda for today. So we're going to talk about an overview of bug bounty platforms and programs. So. What is a bug bounty program? Is it the same as a platform? What is a platform? And is there a formal education or training required or are there no, non-traditional routes to uh, join this profession? What are the most common bugs? And what are career options? How do I maximize my earnings and what tools should I use? Um, when you are, uh, like if you st get started and uh, you don't find anything, there is no money coming in or there's no recognition coming in. People tend to like uh, quickly uh, feel, feel like demotivated and 
at times like that what what can we do and how do, how does one stay motivated and uh, how how to disclose vulnerability responsibility so how do you responsibly uh, uh, disclose a vulnerability that you found and uh, we are going to talk with kevin and mohan about it so the first topic that we're going to discuss is what is bug bounty program and uh, what is a bug bounty platform and um, is it is it like our platforms technology like are they specific to like a certain kind of technology or are they um, related to like say a certain application so maybe there's a platform where you know you would just go in and uh, be able to uh, uh, test or like research certain things based on like maybe social platforms or something so that was Kevin can you can you help us oh. understand uh, sure. Thank you very much for having us tonight. Uh, I will start with the Bug Bounty platform. So Bug Bounty platform is a platform, a website where you can register and where you can find different Bug Bounty programs. So each Bug Bounty program is a description from a company which will set the rules of engagement to invite security researchers, to invite hackers, to find vulnerabilities um, on their website or on their application. It's, it's something which is sometimes a bit overrated, but it's super important. The, the bug bounty programs uh, are all the rules uh, that anyone must follow. Uh, many people are just starting bug bounty and just skimming the, a program and will start to find vulnerability, but it doesn't work like that. This is something that must be read on when you start hunting on a program for a company, you should know all the rules. And it will also help anyone to really understand what the company is looking for in terms of security and what they want from the security researcher to find vulnerability. It's also uh, describe how much you will be paid uh, if you find something on all other information, like how you should connect, if you need to use a VPN, if you need to use a specific testing account. Uh, in terms of specificity, um, I think uh, what you will see in most of the bug bounty platform, uh, it will be most uh, web application testing or mobile app because this is the most common. Uh, for us, I would say it's around 80 to 90% of the program we have. And this is most of the public program. But if you have a specialty in terms of reverse engineering in IoT or some very specific skill set, uh, we, we know the people who are doing that so we can work with them directly. But if you are beginning in this kind of thing, you can also contact the platform and say, hey, I'm doing IoT reverse engineering. I already published this. I'm working on that. And then you will be invited in this kind of program. But this kind of program are more hidden. Uh, this is not the most common. So I, I hope it answers partially the question. Yes, it does. And uh, Mohan, do you have anything to add to that? You're on mute, Mohan. I'll focus on the business side of uh, uh, the uh, whole bug bounty platform. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah. When we uh, talk about bug bounty, uh, I mean, why do we need a bug bounty when we have, uh, you know, all the DevSecOps programs, when we have manual pen testing as well, you know, just before release. So the question comes, uh, do we really need that? And the answer is uh, yes, do, we do need it. And the reason being, although we have all, uh, you know, uh, static analysis, dynamic analysis through an automated uh, CI CD pipeline way, as well as, uh, you know, pen testing at the end, uh, we are not certain that after doing the pen testing that uh, there are no more security vulnerabilities, uh, you know, that are going in production. And the reason for that is, although, uh, you know, manual pen testing is there basically to fill the gaps left by the automated tools, right? Uh, but the time that they get is usually, you know, it ranges between, uh, of course, it depends on the scope, but it ranges between three days to probably 10 days, you know, uh, not more than that. And since they have this time pressure uh, to deliver, uh, they primarily focus on, uh, you know, certain types of vulnerabilities that they are aware of, right? 
uh, and that's that's the uh, limitation from the manual side right uh, they have limited time of course limited people you know so those are two primary things whereby uh, they do their best however there is no uh, guarantee that there are no vulnerabilities that uh, you know are present in your system when it goes to production so that's where exactly the bug bounty uh, uh, program actually comes in picture so this program uh, you know once we onboard your application through uh, a private program probably kevin will touch upon uh, the difference between public and private uh, programs uh, so uh, in a private program uh, i can give my application and say hey uh, you get 3 uh, weeks or 4 weeks and then uh, you know uh, you know the the, uh, the platform basically gives us uh, you know opportunity to interact with variety of uh, researchers who are skilled in uh, various different ways you know so i see when when you look at application there are a lot of other uh, uh, areas you know it's not just web application as such you know so the, the in the background it can be uh, doing some file upload or file management or it could be doing some uh, ai you know on uh, the data that is being uh, uh, taken in or there could be uh, you know some other uh, processing through a shell you know or through some other uh, means so all these different areas actually make one web application so if we get experts in all these areas in one uh, place i think uh, that's what uh, bug bounty programs tries to uh, do in fact and th- that's why we get value for money you know uh, uh, businesses as such yeah so so to the way i look at it is i think uh, and maybe i'm not a um, bug bounty hunter or something but uh, i think it keeps like straight people straight so <laughs> <laughs> this is just like my <laughs> because yes. like if if suppose people are inclined right like this provides them with a pathway of uh, maybe getting recognitions because sometimes you know just people want to be recognized uh, sometimes like it's a good thing if they get some kind of compensation and it's like a way to channel people who would otherwise be uh, doing it not in a very um, structured way so i think i think this provides people with that kind of opportunity also um, the bug bounty platforms and the bug bounty programs and uh, let's go right. to our next question so uh, okay all right so i understand what what is a program and what is a platform uh, i want to know what kind of training do i need uh, do i need formal college education and uh, do i need to learn coding languages how proficient should i be in them and uh, can i lo- learn Uh, bug, bug bug hunting from online training institutes that have cropped up and uh, if i plan to go that route what are the things that i need to look for and um, what is something that i need to be aware of kevin yes um so uh, you don't need a formal training uh, you don't need a, of course a computer science degree will help because you will see the Uh, all the theoretical stuff about uh, the computer how it works how a multi chair uh, application is working uh, it will give you some uh, basis on programming language so of course you don't need to be an expert on everything but at first you need to understand how things works uh, in a way that if you just look at your browser how it will communicate with the website what are all the interaction Uh, between your browser the application an api what is an api what is javascript how it works and same for mobile or for reverse engineering depending on what you want to focus on so you don't need a formal but you need to work on things that you like on um, it's i think what's really required for for bug hunting is a passion for it security it's also a good way to nurture it Uh, because you are working on real target you are working you are trying to find bugs on real application but you need to step back uh, this is something i tell all the time it's bug bounty is not the first things uh, you should start to do uh, first of all you need to do some it security uh, there are thousand on online resources Uh, if you look at a website like portswiggers uh, the company which is uh, doing burp uh, they have fantastic labs and uh, you can try all the kind of 
vulnerability on their website. Um, this is something that anyone should do uh, before even considering doing bug bounty. Because you will really understand how things work, you will discover all kinds of vulnerability. And then when you will understand the different type of vulnerability, you will be able to focus on what you like. Some people will be more um, working on mobile application. Others will prefer to do cross-site scripting, working on JavaScript. Um, you will find your, what we call the green field, something that you like, something you want to explore more. Um, but without looking at everything before, just trying to find one bug, um, not understanding how a, let's say cross-site scripting works and just say, oh, I saw someone pushing this payload, uh, this string on it pop. Yes, but if you really don't understand what you can do, how it works, you will go nowhere. Um, it's really a journey. It's not something like the bug bounty should not be uh, just, oh, okay, I want to do IT security, tomorrow I will do bug bounty because you will get demotivated very quickly. Uh, because it's it's hard. Basically, you will start to attack application who had been hardened previously. You are not the first one to try to find a bug on this application. Hundreds of people are trying to do the same. So if you are if you are really a total beginner, you will not find anything, and you will become discouraged. And that's not the point. Learn as much as you can. Do CTF. Uh, this is something I love, and I think the best bug hunter I know, uh, they are still continuing to do CTF. And sometimes they see something on CTF and say, oh, we should try on this website, and they find crazy bugs with that. So it's really learn as much as you can from any source, uh, so many labs, so many CTF. And then when you start to be comfortable with the labs, um, you are able to find vulnerability on the lab, and you score a few points on even CTF, you can try. And this is the point where I say, oh, I'm good at it. I like this kind of vulnerability. I will try to find it in a real target. And this way, you will see that you are able to find it. But if you are first not able to find it on a CTF or on a lab, you will not find it on a real target. So go step by step and you will and it's amazing. After you will find your first vulnerability on a big website, on a real target, you will get a monetary reward for it. And then that's just the beginning. And this is where you will continue to invest your time. And you will see that the time you invest, more you learn, more you will earn later. Thanks. And Mohan, uh, how did you okay. learn? OK. Uh... Let me take Narayanan's question. He is asking uh, what level and depth of knowledge required at operating system level, Windows, Linux, Mac, etc., for bug bounty hunting, and is there any methodology that is defined uh, that one can follow? You know, so uh, yeah. So uh, I'll tell my experience. In fact, uh, once uh, I finished my OSCP, I was already into security testing, but OSCP gave me that additional edge. Uh, in trying to understand uh, the web, the infrastructure, and uh, you know how to exploit, how to uh, escalate the privileges, and how to move laterally, you know. So uh, to answer Narayanan's question, uh, see, uh, OS knowledge is required, but that comes uh, later, you know. So if you look at the number of uh, or type of application that uh, are onboarded on, uh, you know, uh, bug bounty platform, most of those are either web application. Uh, or uh, mobile application. And nowadays, I think uh, some IoT applications are coming. So uh, when it is web and mobile, I think uh, your starting point should be, how do I find these uh, vulnerabilities in the web and mobile application? You know, So that's that's your first entry point. You know, So once you uh, are able to understand how these uh, different web applications work, uh, so you, you have a peculiar way, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to, uh, the uh, behavior of these applications. So you, you need to first understand that, you know, how Python-based applications work, how Java-based or how .NET-based applications uh, work, you know. Uh, so once you have that uh, understanding, similarly on the mobile front, you know, how the iOS and how the Android applications work. So first entry barrier is this uh, web layer, you know, or the mobile layer. And in the background, of course, uh, it has its APIs or, you know, microservices or, uh, it can be any other uh, traditional architecture like you know three layer four layer architecture 
So once you are able to cross this barrier of uh, you know the uh, presentation layer or web application layer or mobile uh, application layer. Then you, uh, you know, uh, uh, once you are at the server side, you know, uh, then yes, uh, at that point in time, you definitely uh, would need knowledge of uh, what OS that uh, server is running on, you know, and uh, who I am I basically. Am I a general application user or am I an administration uh, user, you know, uh, and some things like that. Once you are able to understand that part, what is OS, who are you, I mean, in terms of capabilities then you based on the os you can actually use some uh, techniques to escalate the privileges you know you can explore different areas and then uh, you know try to escalate the privileges so to answer in brief uh, first understand how these web applications work in different technologies as well as the mobile uh, application how they work and uh, first try to identify vulnerabilities there and if you are able to exploit and then go to the uh, next layer that is either middle layer or even at the server layer, you know, and that's where your OS knowledge is required. Uh, Vivek is asking any good resources for bug bounty hunting for beginners. Uh, Kevin, you want to take that? Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, one of my favorite, honestly, it's uh, the Portswigger website. Uh, I mentioned them earlier on um, this guy. They are amazing. It's free. You have a lab. You have, a, I don't know how many. Uh, how many uh, application you can try. So this is really web focus and it's very interesting. After you have another website, uh, which is uh, Routme. Uh, Routme uh, I can pass the link at the end. And I will yeah, pass all the I link. Think that would be on uh, yeah. Routme, which is amazing. You have the guy uh, from Agdobox who are doing an amazing job as well, but it's more diverse. It's, I would say it's a bit more focused on penetration more penetration testing it's a bit different because it's really it's a bit different uh and then after you have like a kind of certification you mentioned oscp which is really excellent um if you want to go in this way like a with a learning experience full learning experience where you have the whole process oscp is very good uh, you have the guy from pen tester academy who are doing an amazing job as well um, you start to have quite a lot of people who are doing it and uh, it works well. It's also, um, I think that's a good point to start. I don't want to give too many websites because or too many references because when we start to give like 20 references, uh, you don't know where to start. But I would say if you want to focus on web, go on Portfigure website. And, uh, if you want to really hack machine, maybe on go on hack the box. If you want a CTF experience on something with a lot of different uh, kind of vulnerability, you can go on a root me. And I will stop here. And I will provide all the link at the end. Sure, thank you so much. And uh, so we've covered now what the depth of knowledge that is required. Uh, you need to be joining these uh, bug bounty programs. Um, in the sense like you need to like uh, go to try out your knowledge. You need to be on these uh, uh, capture the flag contest, right, uh, Kevin? And, yes. uh, and to learn, you've provided a list of like resources. I will, I will put them in the description so that uh, and anybody who's joining then, then can go, go down and like uh, take it from here. Sure. Uh, Coming, coming to this, like now, okay, I found out like what I need to know. Uh, there is a question that do you need to be like an expert developer in order to start uh, bug bounty hunting? So Kevin, can you answer uh, that question? Experts, definitely not. You don't need to be an expert. Uh, but I think it helps. Uh, understand how it works, it helps. If you never did JavaScript in your life, uh, and you want to pop an XSS, uh, you will just be able to use a basic payload, but you will not be able to find a bypass. You will not be able to do anything. There is an excellent vulnerability. It was on the front page of Facebook. Uh, I think it was two weeks ago. Front page of Facebook, it was 20K, 20,000 US dollars uh, for this vulnerability. And the guy is a developer. He's understand, he, he understands how it works. It's in front of everyone front page uh, login page of facebook so there are vulnerability everywhere but this is um, if you start to be an expert on something 
this is where you will hit the jackpot, basically. If you are just targeting very low vulnerability, just copy past a payload for XSS, you will go nowhere. If you are able to find, uh, let's say there is a, a company with a chat uh, in JavaScript, and you are able to create a worm inside this chat with JavaScript, you're able to build it. And um, the difference with just oh, an alert, which will be $50, and a worm, which will be 10000 uh, this is where the difference is between uh, elite bug hunter and uh, people who get demotivated quite fast, actually, with just very few elements. Thanks, thanks. This is great insight. So what you're saying is that stay focused and specialize and go deep yeah. and accept instead of like going broad on everything, right? Yes, and trying go to deep. Yeah. Go deep. Go, yeah, thank, thank you. Okay, now, now the second question that comes to mind is... Um, what kind of tool do I need? Like do and hardware do I need to buy and go and like run out and buy a new uh, laptop or do I need what kind of special hardware or software suite or are there any open source tools that I need to learn and how much will this set me back by? Okay, so, uh, I would just answer for myself uh, in terms of tools you don't need. Uh, there is uh, many people uh, were talking about Rico, 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 uh, which is like um, you use many tools to find hidden targets. Uh, it works on some kind of bug bounty. It works on bug bounty like the one from Verizon, a very large one. Uh, for myself, uh, I don't do that. And uh, what I see is the guy who are very good, uh, the guy who really are learning quite a lot, uh, they go straight to the main application. There is no point of using 20 tools. Just go in front where it will be painful for the company. Uh, the login page for Facebook is the perfect example. Um, so you don't need that many tools. Uh, I would say for myself, I'm just using Burp. And you can use the free version. It works. Uh, if you start to earn a few bounty, pay a license, it works it because they have more tools. Uh, I use Burp, I use a laptop, a basic laptop, uh, quite a lot of RAM because Burp is in Java, so it requires quite a lot of RAM. I have an old Android uh, phone, which is root, a rooted Android phone uh, for proxy and for testing application. And uh, that's basically it. Uh, I have also uh, a server a VPS, a small VPS for all the out of bound vulnerability where sometimes you want to see if you have a SSRF or something like that, if you're able to connect back to another server, but that's it. I think the, the VPS, I, will, I should pay like $2 per month or $3 per month. Uh, Burp, I have a pro license, but I earn it uh, during bug bounty session and that's it. That's really it. Just go on the go straight to the target, find something, and you will see this is where there is money, basically. This is where you will find vulnerability. Uh, you can, don't go, don't try to test 70 tools and, uh, because everyone is doing that. Basically, in bug bounty, many people, they just start, they read the paper and say, oh, I use SQL map, or I use this tool and I launch it and I got a vulnerability. Yes, but, the guy launched it in 200 other websites and didn't get anything from that. Um, but if you know how things work, it's honestly, I, I will use the best example. It was a guy, the guy was a sales guy. And um, I was discussing with him and he said, oh, I need to earn more money. I said, yeah, just do bug bounty. And uh, he was sales for a security company. Um, this guy started focusing and he read the open or the OWASP top 10 doing just basic training on himself. He did the training for like two, three months, really focused. Uh, a few nights a week, he was working, working. Then he started hunting. He didn't choose all the tools of Rico, all this kind of stuff. And today is one of the best hunter on our platform. And uh, just because his focus is eating the target, and he's going straight. He, he's not a very good developer. He's not a developer at all, but he's able to find crazy business logic vulnerability. And um, this is 
this is his greenfield. This is something he's very good at it because he, he tried to understand the business logic. And I don't know, he's, uh, he's earning a lot from that. And, uh, and that's it. No formal background, nothing, but it's really possible. But just stay focused. And that's the most important. And don't go for fancy tool, fancy uh, laptop. You don't need stickers on your laptop to, uh, to find vulnerability. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's the most important part. Uh, any hardware. You Let will be able to. Uh, Kevin, I think that there could be a lot of uh, freshers, right? Uh, absolutely yeah. freshers. Uh, they are just hearing bug bounty today, you know. So yeah. uh, how for them, probably I, I would suggest, um, yeah, so I definitely agree with uh, Kevin. You don't need a full-fledged uh, high-end uh, Mac or Linux uh, machine to get started, right? So as long as you have internet connectivity, uh, a, a basic Linux ma machine with a decent RAM, I would say, uh, uh, you can actually get started. Uh, I would uh, recommend Kali Linux. You know that, that's uh, yeah. a Linux which uh, uh, you can that Linux flavor actually can be used. Uh, you know if you are complete fresher. You know so because that gives you a lot of uh, different areas uh, in which. Uh, you know, they have scripts, tools uh, already built into that uh, OS flavor and that you can readily use. Uh, so once you install, uh, you would, you know, you can spend some time to understand what each type of different uh, tools work, uh, you know, and uh, how you can make use of it. So once you install those, probably the next thing that, uh, you know, you want to try out, uh, hey, how these uh, bugs are normally found by uh, experts, you know. So if you just search uh, uh, you know, for uh, walkthroughs of uh, how the biggest uh, uh, bugs were found, you know, uh, those walkthroughs can give you a very good hint in terms of how they started. You know? And uh, once you understand that, then you can start using those uh, uh, relative tools uh, you know, uh, in some of the sites where uh, you are registered uh, for bug bounty. And uh, so over a period, right? Uh, so you can also uh, do something in parallel, uh, you know, along with uh, bug bounty programs is uh, you have this vulnhub.com. So uh, if you just go there, you can download these vulnerable, uh, intentionally vulnerable uh, VMs. And uh, there are a lot of walkthroughs actually that will help you to get into that mindset, you know, hey, uh, if, if this is the VM, I have only this much uh, information about it. How do I get started, you know? How do I uh, find that, that there, are, there is a vulnerability there, you know? And if I find it, how do I exploit it, you know? Once I exploit, uh, I mean, while exploiting, what tool actually I should be using, whether Nmap or, uh, you know, SQL map or, uh, you know, Divbuster or uh, things like that, right? So uh, get used to these uh, tools. I do agree uh, with Kevin that uh, if you have uh, enough expertise, just burp, suit is just good enough, you know, or as OWASP ZAP is just good enough. But uh, till you reach that uh, initial uh, expertise level, uh, you know, you, you need to basically understand the uh, landscape, right? Uh, you first understand how these bugs can be found, what tools can be used, and where you need to use those tools. That is, again, an important thing. So once you have uh, done your homework and, uh, you know, you, you, you dirtied your hands, then, uh, you know, uh, you, you reach a level where the moment you start seeing some behavior, you can actually predict that, okay, there could be a possibility of, uh, you know, a SQL injection or uh, a process scripting or uh, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, behavior that you would think that would lead to some kind of, uh, you know, bug uh, and leading to a bounty then. Sure, um, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I would just yeah. add something because it's very interesting. Kali Linux is perfect and from the OSCP perspective as well. And that's why CTF big, um, or Vilna, because you will have to use this tool. But um, that's, I totally agree on this part. But just if I would, I, I want to add a pinch of salt on it, it's don't focus only on the tools. Um, the most important part is really from your perspective, how you understand the application, how you, um, it's really like the tool will never do the job. Because if it was possible with just launching tools uh, to find the vulnerability, no one will do bug bounty. 
So really, so the tools are really like any a guy who is doing painting or something like that. It's not the <laughs> the brush or or the paint we will do the job. It's really the guy who handle it and will manipulate it. So really keep that in mind, and especially when you are beginning because I saw someone say, oh, I install all the tools, I launched the tool, I don't find anything. And uh, so that's why it's quite important to, to get a step back from the tools. But yes, Kali Linux is excellent. Thanks, thanks. Uh, I, so I'm new, right? I'm just trying to learn stuff. And why, why don't I like try out all the tools which are available? and then see which ones uh, I like or which ones, because I think it's not going to hurt you to try stuff out instead of saying, oh, if Kevin told me this or Mohan said that and uh, stay focused only on those things. So, so my, if, I'm, if, if I was like trying to do this, try whatever tools are available and then scale back because you will know that, oh, this thing is not maybe, you know, something that you like, something like Kevin said, right? So you can't go and like ask Michelangelo, what does what your setup look like? And can I copy it and get similar results? Because probably not, right? So the way I look at it is try things out and, and see what works for you. And then you will over a point, like over a period of time, as you go through all these capture the flag, you will go through the trying things out. Maybe you will come up with your optimal setup, right? Because yeah. Kevin setup, Mohan setup, they have been doing this for years. And now they have come to a point like what Mohan said, right? Go and on YouTube, see all these walkthroughs, see what they are doing. So that helps you. So that's that's my input. Like th this is something that I would do as suppose I was just starting off today. I want to add one more thing. Uh, see, uh, if you're completely a starter, find a buddy. You know, you have a friend who's uh, interested in this. You know, he shares, uh, he or she shares the same passion as you just work together you know that always helps because uh, if you're uh, losing uh, interest uh, you know the the other person actually can uh, boost your morale and uh, you know keep you going and you can do the same thing for the other person so having buddies while uh, you know uh, you're going through this journey always always helps yeah. i have seen it personally yeah yeah and this is how i start as well perfect perfect <laughs> okay. Uh, there is a question from Matthew and he's asking that, do you need to have like a dedicated Linux machine or can you um, like run it virtually? I think he's talking about maybe like a parallels or something. Um, so, you know, he's, do, do you need like a, a dedicated Linux machine for this? Uh... Yeah, when you start, you don't need it. And, uh, but after some time, because you will spend more time doing it, basically, you will spend more time on the virtual machine than doing anything else. This is the time where you will say, okay, we'll just uh, switch from a dedicated machine for, for doing that. But before you don't need it. Can you, you can, can totally you... start with a virtual machine. Perfect, perfect. Um, and uh, can you like, um, so I think Amazon has got this, uh, uh, desktop environment or something. So can you uh, use that? Does that work or no? Uh, I think it will, it will be a bit shaky. Uh, I would prefer uh, to use just, uh, this is how most of the people, even some pen pen penetration tester I know, uh, they have a virtual machine on a Windows computer. Or some, if you are on Mac, you don't need a, a virtual machine because you have all the tools or if you are on Linux, it's the same, but even if you are on uh, on Linux or on Mac, most of the time you will have a virtual machine with a Windows computer because you might need some some stuff from a, a Windows computer. Sure, so... thanks. So now our next question is, uh, what are the most common bugs? Because uh, I want to catch that low hanging fruit. And uh, can you tell me what are the low and, and which application or software uh, language is the most glitchy? Uh, Mohan, you want to go? No, no, Kevin, you, you, you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, there are many types of bugs. I think the, the best overview is the OWASP top 10. It will give you a perfect overview of the 10 most common type of bugs. Um, I would say in terms of, uh, so you have all 
but basically a bug is always the same thing. It's you have an application uh, with a specific usage and you want to do something to change the usage of this application. So instead of, uh, I don't know, the application is just supposed to give you uh, one file, you try to access the file of someone else. Uh, this is the mindset you should have. Um, in terms of bugs, yes, many cross-site scripting, especially today because we see uh, more and more applications built on JavaScript. Uh, you have a bit less than before uh, SQL injection uh, because of people start to understand how it works, but we will still, um, you also have a lot of um, business logic application. You have a lot of business logic application. What I call business logic, it's let's say, uh, you have the you are buying something on the e-commerce website and uh, you can change the price and order something with a different price. This is what because you just change it somewhere uh, in the flow. So this is a business logic. So you have all this type of vulnerability. Uh, Low-hanging fruit, yes, and uh, there, there are many. But the main problem with this kind of longing fruit is the reward will always be small. Uh, because those are vulnerabilities that anyone can find. And in 80% of the case, because they are low-hanging fruit, you will be duplicate. You will not be the first one to find it. So sometimes what I say is when you see that a program is very fresh, it costs nothing. If you find something uh, like a low-hanging fruit, you can just report it. But just looking for them, uh, your expectation and in time you will spend, uh, you will not find anything uh, based on that. So it's not the, don't go for the, for the low hanging fruit. Try to go just a bit deeper on a, yeah, this is something also, it's a mistake from many guys who are new at Bug Bounty. They go on a scope, they try for the low hanging fruit don't find it or report it and they are duplicate and they change scope. And instead of doing that all the time, it's, you, you will get reward if instead of spending like just one hour on one scope, spend one week, two weeks. Uh, I have some scope uh, when I'm hunting, I hunt on them for maybe the past six months. Uh, or yes, yeah, sometimes even more. And I'm just going back every two, three weeks spend one night, two nights looking for. Most of the time, I don't find anything. But one day I say, oh, they changed this. Maybe because I remember they did that previously, I can find a crazy vulnerability. And it works. It really works. Uh, spend time on your target. Don't work on 20 targets. Work on five, five targets. Um, these are the ones where you can really go deep and you will find something. Sure, and Mohan? Uh, let me add a few things, yes. So um, I, I agree with uh, Kevin, uh, you know, if you find issues in business logic, those are uh, really worth your ex uh, time and effort, you know, because uh, if it is technology specific, there, are, there would be a lot of people who would be doing that in parallel. But if you're able to uh, exploit these uh, business logic related uh, flaws, uh, you would be paid uh, much better. Uh, what are those business logic flaws? For example, if it's an e-commerce site, right? And uh, they have uh, the normal uh, you know, workflow, right? Uh, so you have uh, different products. Uh, you basically, as a customer, you choose these products, you choose the quantity, and then you say, okay, go ahead, uh, I want to, uh, Pay now, right? And then you go. Uh, you will be shown the uh, the, the total amount of uh, uh, money that you need to pay, the amount of uh, or the quantities and the different items that you have put in the cart, right? And uh, if you are able to, you know, just before you submit, if you are able to trap that request and reduce the you know total amount that you pay, uh, say if it is say one thousand US dollars, right? And instead, if you're able to put it as zero and then submit, and if the server accepts that request, then it's it's you are able to actually uh, you know buy all that without paying anything, right? That's a business logic flaw for an e-commerce site, right? Uh, 
right? So if you are able to report a, a flaw like this to those e-commerce sites, they would be happy to pay you really very handsome because they probably have not tested this part of the business logic and you are able to uh, find it. And if you, you know, if you report them in a, in a, uh, you know, in a responsible manner through a bug bounty platform, you would definitely be paid much higher than, uh, than you can imagine, you know? So uh, business logic flaws, you should always target. But if you're a fresher, you know, obviously you need to start from somewhere, you know, when I found my first bug, uh, uh, it, it was a low hanging fruit, right? Uh, so Kevin may not appreciate that, but uh, it, for me, it was like, oh my, I did, did really something uh, very big, you know? So that was my uh, feeling when I got uh, the first low hanging fruit as a bug. And when I reported, uh, you know, I got into the, uh, uh, you know, the hall of fame of that organization and so on. So the point is, uh, you start somewhere, gain confidence, you know, once you are uh, uh, going for, uh, you know, I won't say uh, low hanging fruit, but as you go further, you need to try and achieve uh, bigger targets, you know. And uh, so as Kevin rightly said, in the bug bounty programs, if you continue to uh, stay at, uh, you know, targeting low hanging fruits, you would eventually would lose out, you know, because there would be some people who, who are quicker than you to report those. Once they report it, even if you report it later, you will not be paid. Those are considered as duplicate bugs and uh, your, the effort would go waste. So instead, as Kevin rightly said, as you go further, once you have some enough confidence, identify what, what that site does or what that application does and see where an application can go wrong, you know, in terms of business logic. And then, uh, you know, go ahead and, uh, you know, um, try to break that. And if you're able to do that, yes, that, that will be a really handsome uh, bounty then. One more area, uh, you know, I want uh, you guys to focus is uh, the uh, open source uh, library based CVEs. I hope uh, CVEs you would be aware. These, this, these are common vulnerabilities and exposures. So just if you search for CVE, you would actually get a lot of CVE details you know, uh, from different sites. So what does CVE means? So if I'm a researcher, right, I have done some, uh, I have focused on X library and then I have tracked all the different versions and I have identified that, hey, uh, in these, these versions, there is this uh, security vulnerability that is lying around. And once I report, I get a CVE number, you know, and then uh, that is assigned to my vulnerability and it is published all over the world then, right? So if you're tracking these CVEs, uh, either old CVEs or recent CVEs, so if you're tracking, you if you like some area, you know, so identify that area, identify all the CVEs in that area and then see if you're able to explore uh, more so that you can get the indicators, right? saying that, okay, uh, if the behavior is like this, maybe they are using uh, AngularJ or, uh, you know, Node.js or, uh, you know, React Native, you know, these things. So if you are able to find these CVEs associated with these different open source libraries, and then you go ahead and, uh, you know, attack, then uh, you have done your homework, you know, uh, you know, these are potentially vulnerable uh, versions that they are, they are using in that web application, then you can go ahead and, uh, you know, try to exploit that. Uh, let me quote uh, a very big example. I, I guess everyone would know about it, you know, the Equifax. So if you uh, uh, know in 2017, uh, Equifax uh, was hacked and uh, I think 145 million US record, uh, 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 records were actually compromised during that uh, hack. And uh, the reason for that was, uh, you may wonder, you know, it was struts true vulnerability. And Stratru vulnerability was actually reported in, uh, uh, you know, public domain and uh, Apache was working on fix. They released the fix, but this organization did not patch that uh, vulnerability, right? So uh, the moment uh, uh, people came to know, hey, uh, th this is the vulnerability uh, that exists. And uh, these are the different uh, organizations which are still using the struts too. And they just went ahead everywhere, you know, wherever they could actually uh, exploit and uh, you know uh, Equifax was one such a glaring example where they were using struts to they did not patch it and the uh, the vulnerability was very critical that means I don't have to know anything about uh, 
the 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 you know the um, application details except that hey whether uh, this application uses struts to or not the moment i have that knowledge i would be able to just uh, exploit that without having any uh, knowledge any uh, data uh, or customer data or whatever application related data you know so just the url was good enough to uh, exploit that vulnerability so identifying uh, and keeping a watch on such cves uh, on uh, you know different open source library components is always uh, beneficial you know it will always help you in the long run yeah sure, uh, yeah i will add something so um, yeah it's a very very good point on it very helpful i will just add a question on that um, for the because struts 2 is very good uh, it's a very good example uh, if you are beginning in bug bounty uh, we used to say uh, proof of concept or nothing in a way that if you find a website and you say oh they are using struts too uh, but you are not able to exploit the vulnerability for real you don't have a real proof of concept that you can uh, have any impact on the application uh, it will, it will not worth anything for the company because they might have a web application firewall, they, they might have something. So you will report a struts to vulnerability because it might be exploitable, but you just report it and you say, yeah, but you are not able to exploit. If you are not able to exploit, we will not pay you. So spend a bit more time to find a real business impact. Spend time to have a proof of concept, a video or something, and you show them that you are able to exploit the vulnerability. And that's the most important part. Uh, longing fruit, why not? But always think in terms of business impact for the company. In front of you, especially in bug bounty, you can have developer, you can have people who, who are less knowledgeable than you in terms of IT security. And these people, you will give them a report with a vulnerability from an application. But what's the problem for the company and even the way you will write the report you should always focus on why it's important for the company and uh, what's the business impact and the, if you stay on the technical part some people will not understand what you are talking about right. but try to always explain the vulnerability in terms of impact for the company you find a SQL injection, that's good. But for some people, it's just a SQL injection. What's the problem? You tell them, I find a SQL injection and I'm able to get all your user that I can read, all your user, I can read all uh, your password, I get all the emails and password hash. This is an impact. You find a vulnerability, Struts 2 is vulnerable, is vulnerable. Okay, good, but what you can do? You come back and you say, your struts too is vulnerable. And no, I'm the king of the castle. I have access to all your computer. It's totally different. So really focus on the impact and uh, you will get better reward. That's also uh, the difference between a medium and an eye or eye or critical vulnerability because you are paid by step. If you're able to show real business impact, most of the time you will be able to climb the ladder of the reward. Sure, thanks so much. Um, and, and basically what uh, you and Mohan said was that the riches and the niches are like in niche specialized stuff instead of trying to you know, spray and pray everywhere. Um, like stay focused and like niche down and, and find your uh, place and uh, business vulnerabilities are something that you can easily start with. You don't require like any kind of specialized tools for those. Um, because it's like you're testing a business process. Now, there are questions about, okay, so now I have learned, I, I know what to do, I have got my niche. And uh, what about my career? What kind of career options do I have? And there is another question on how many hours per week typically spent by someone doing uh, bug hunting as a career. But I have, one sec, let's, uh, okay. So, um, like, what do I do? Like, what are my career options? Uh, can I start a business uh, running, hunting bugs? What are my job options? If I'm interested in a corporate kind of environment, I'm not interested in being by myself and doing this. And then 
uh, can I keep like uh, bug hunting as a side hustle? Uh, I, because I just like to do it, but you know, it's not providing me with that steady income. Um, I would say uh, starting uh, directly as a bug hunter professional, uh, it will never work. Uh, or you are very good and you have a lot of experience, but if this is something you want to do in the next three months, it would be tough. Uh, but what you learn will be super useful and what you can start uh, to work uh, as a junior security pen tester on doing bug bounty on the side. And this is what we see. It's many people, uh, they have a job. Uh, some of them were not on IT security. They learn uh, how to do bug bounty. They learn uh, the opera. I will, <laughs> I like to say the real security, uh, how to exploit bugs, how to, uh, to do all this kind of stuff. Um, you will not make a living at the beginning, uh, for sure. But you can have a job. You can start to be a penetration tester. You can be a security analyst. Uh, you can work in many ways where this knowledge will be super useful. And you will be even better than the other because you have this knowledge on the side. So on top of that, you will continue to learn. You will, will be able to do it as a side hustle. And you will earn money and you will earn more and more and more because you will get more experience. Um, you will become better. And at some point, and this is what we see, some penetration taster, at some point they say, I earn way more doing a bug bounty on the side that my salary as a penetration tester. And now it's time to switch. But it's an art choice because uh, it's a bit lonely, to be honest, uh, for the people. And uh, the people who are doing it full time, it can be very stressful because uh, you can, everyone is talking about the success in bug bounty, but uh, you can spend weeks without finding anything. It happens. It happens to anyone, any bug hunter. It's not like every night you go and you spend two hours and you find a bug. It doesn't work like that. It's not because on Twitter you see many people, oh, I own 5,000. Yes, look at, the, at this guy. When was the last time you report the same? You will see it was quite a long time. So this is a reality. There are some guys who earn 300K uh, per year, uh, but it's because they are only focusing on a high value target with critical vulnerability, only critical vulnerability. And that's why they aren't so much. But it, you can have also, we see some people who used to do it uh, full time and then they get like burnout. Because when you spend two weeks, uh, you can, because you can do it whenever you want, um, it's also something that can be. Uh, dangerous for your mental health uh, because you will spend the whole night and uh, you will not be able to find something. It's 4 a.m. in the morning. You didn't find a vulnerability. You don't sleep well. You it's start the night. <laughs> <You>, uh... <laughs> so uh, I think you don't see it uh, as something like, oh, uh, I will be tomorrow uh, full-time bug hunter. Yeah. It's like, oh, tomorrow I want to be a professional uh, soccer player, football player. Uh, it's not very realistic. But if you say, oh, I love football. I want to do competition. I continue to do that. I'm working in a health uh, related job. And then I continue to train. I continue to improve. Why not? I mean, you will be able to do it. And the knowledge you will gain with bug bounty, with finding real bugs, uh, it's so much value. And even for yourself, I think it's, uh, it's one of the most exciting things to do, uh, to find bugs on application. Sure. And uh, that brings us to our next question, which is, uh, how do I maximize my learning? So how do I practice what I'm learning? And... Uh, where where do i like where do i take this and go because now um i've been like like you said right uh, try and find out so do i just go to a bug bounty platform and try my luck out and uh, what else can i do to you know maximize what i am learning from is is there any kind of like a forum or where do i go 
Uh, I think the, the first things uh, from Mohan was very interesting. And uh, find someone where you can practice with. Uh, someone with you, you, you can learn with, you can discuss, you can exchange. Because I think it's something it's a bit lonely. And uh, it's very good to discuss with someone and to continue to be motivated. Uh, what I would recommend, it's kind of blended approach. You do labs, you learn stuff, and then you go on a real website, you go on a, an application, and you try to find the same kind of vulnerability on this application. If you're unlucky, you will find it. If you're not, okay, just go back to the lab and continue. It's not because you didn't find it in a real application that uh, you are not good at it. The, what I think it's very frustrating uh, for beginner in bug hunting, it's sometimes uh, you can spend hours on an application and you will not find the bug. Um, because maybe what you are looking for doesn't exist. <laughs> it's possible. Whereas when you are doing labs or CTF, there is a bug and you can find it. So the approach is different because you know there is a bug, you know that you could find it. But sometimes on bug bounty, you are not sure if it's present or not. So it can be um, very hard for people who are beginning. But when you have enough confidence that, that if there is this bug, I will find it, this is where you will start to, to be able to find more bugs. So don't focus on bug bounty, don't focus on lab, learn, then go on real application. You might not find anything. That's not a problem. Just split your time. You can say, okay, I learn for maybe three days or three nights. I do lab, I practice. I spend one night uh, trying to find real bugs. Go back on learning and go back on your switch like that. And this is where you will maximize because one night you will find the bug. And it will not maybe on what you were working the three previous day, but on what you were working maybe one month ago and you say, oh, I saw this. I know I can exploit it. You exploit it. That's very good. But even like um, professional, I would say professional bug hunter, they continue to do CTF. They continue to, to, do, uh, to find any way of learning. And they continue to read paper, they continue to read write up, or you still continue, you learn all the time. And you learn, you practice, you learn, you practice. If you are just practicing without learning, you will go nowhere. If you just practice, on, uh, if you just learn but never practice, you will go no, nowhere as well. Sure. And Mohan, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, sure. Uh, in fact, Kevin covered it uh, very rightly. Uh, so learning and practice uh, uh, both have to go hand in hand, you know. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, Kevin pointed out correctly again, uh, the CTF competitions, you know, a lot of uh, forums actually, uh, uh, you know, conduct these uh, CTFs uh, every now and then. Just keep looking for and, uh, you know, uh, uh, keep registering, keep attempting. The, the point here is uh, not to win, but uh, to get into the groove, you know, to get into the mindset and identify newer ways of uh, you know getting uh, exploiting uh, you know those vulnerabilities uh, and uh, apart from that i i think uh, you should attend the meetups you know so if you are able to find some meetups which are covering cyber security related uh, challenges identify those uh, if there are meetups about new technologies for example uh, you know like um, uh, say uh, Docker, you know, or Kubernetes, uh, or anything that is uh, new, right? So a lot of companies are actually now just starting in that direction. And uh, if they are, they have exposed uh, their application using that technology in the public domain, then uh, you know, if if you are aware of that, you can actually try and uh, exploit some vulnerabilities there. So new, I mean, uh, see, new technologies are better. Uh, in some respect, but they lack in certain other respects, right? So your your abilities uh, should be to focus on those where the new technology lacks. For example, if you look at uh, Kubernetes, right? So Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes has been in uh, you know in the production for I think quite a, a few years now. But uh, although uh, you know it, it's there, uh, there are a lot of new changes that are happening. It is trying to improvise the platform uh, as a platform as well as as a technology 
but at the same time while they are developing uh, new tools new ways uh, there are vulnerabilities you know and if you are aware you know i think uh, late 2019 there was a vulnerability that was reported in the kubernetes platform itself and uh, that was fixed within a day because of uh, you know a very aggressive effort from the uh, open source community so the point i'm trying to make here is uh, if you want to continue to uh, go in this bug bounty direction keep an eye on the new technologies uh, new platforms uh, and uh, identify where uh, what challenges these platforms and new, these technologies have it and see if you are able to do some uh, uh, you know uh, uh, deep research on it and see if uh, you know there is a possibility of coming out to the proof of concept saying that hey i tried this new vulnerability uh, i mean new library from kubernetes and uh, i think there is a potential vulnerability there you know and if a company is actually uh, putting their production uh, you know applications in production using kubernetes uh, either aks or you know in anything either in google or in aws cloud just see if your poc can actually be uh, you know uh, worked out on on those applications and uh, i think uh, uh, kevin rightly pointed again uh, you know this journey is continuous journey you know uh, like us uh, we we as a security consultants we always uh, keep learning new ways of uh, you know uh, hacking as well as new uh, ways of defending so this journey for us never stops similarly for you guys as a bug bounty hunters this journey should never stop the moment you uh, you know slow down in the learning you are actually be uh, beaten by the competition the other folks actually would uh, you know go ahead of you so only way to sustain keep yourself relevant in the whole uh, bug bounty uh, process is to keep learning keep practicing Sure. Thanks. Uh, I would, yeah, I would just add a because just on top of uh, what Mon said. On a, this is a personal experience. Um, I started on one application, uh, one program, one scope, and they had a GraphQL uh, available. I never did any GraphQL in my life. So what I did, and uh, I spent few days learning how it works, on uh, looking at what kind of vulnerability it can find. And the scope was open for quite a while. And it's still possible to find vulnerability on it. And that's really the point. It's new technology. The developer, they are as good as you on this application. <laughs> they are discovering as well. And this is where you can find. So you can say, oh, no, uh, I don't care. Uh, it's a new technology. I don't want to learn anything about it. But if you go on this one, you learn. And you will capitalize from all the other stuff you learned before, and then you will find new vulnerability. And that's why, and that's how you will continue to be not too bad. Try to be good and find vulnerability because the technology will change. Thanks. And one thing I want to add uh, to what Mohan was saying was that go look for meetups, go look for places that you yeah. know you can connect with others. But if you don't find it, right? If you cannot find the uh, a meetup or something near you then be the leader and just start it because there might be other people also who are looking for something similar and uh, you know if you if you take the lead and you can tell people like i i tell people i have got like meetups so i tell people like i am not the expert but i am going to do this and together we are going to learn right so so people come in with expectations set expectations what do you think right nobody can say oh yeah i am the best i am the greatest you know and i have got like in in the jungle like you know right if if there are no birds except one that's saying the best it will just be like an empty place so start start doing and and say okay i'm going to start something over here local because there are many people and just now you don't even need to be local you can like get people from everywhere in the world to join your meetup because you are pr pretty much online and you can continue doing that and you can uh, share your knowledge with others uh coming to now like now i have done all these i know what it is like but uh, what about the money so now my question to kevin is how long will it take me to earn money hunting bugs and uh, how long it will it be before i get invited to private programs and uh, when is the time like i'm like you said i'm burnt out or how do i take that one extra hour putting in and trying to learn or maybe trying to find a bug and uh, is there like any time when i should say okay you know what i'm not good at this at all and uh, probably give up 
Um, okay, there is uh, something. Uh, it's not from me. It's from a, a friend and a guy who is doing bug bounty uh, professionally. And he, he was on an interview uh, last week. And what he said, uh, the, the first thing in bug bounty, uh, you only have one reputation. And it, it really works like that in bug bounty. So if you just start um, just thinking about the money, you, especially if you are a beginner, uh, you will report uh, and going just for long in fruit, your report will not be good. And at the end, you will not be invited in private program. Simply because if you want to go too fast, uh, you, you, people will say, okay, who is this guy? And what's the kind of report is that? So I would say, don't focus on the money. And this is really, I think, the most important part uh, at the beginning. At the beginning, it's like saying, oh, I want to, again, for the soccer player, and say, oh, I want to play the World Cup and earn millions. No, do it because you like it. And the money will come. And it, it, it will just come by itself. Focus on looking for impact, focus on learning, on enjoying what you are doing. And in this case, you will not get demotivated because you don't find any vulnerability. But if you like trying to find vulnerability, you will find them. At some point, eventually, you will find vulnerability and this is where you will get paid. Um, but bug bounty is not something that you can take. You don't go for the money. If you just go for the money, you will get demotivated. Because even for good hunter, you can have weeks uh, where you don't find anything. So really, it's important to have... Um, I know that there is a lot of hype about bug bounty. Uh, we are a bug bounty platform, we do it. And we met also a lot of people who come and say, oh, how much I can earn? Uh, don't focus on that. At the end, you will earn money if you do it properly, if you learn it. It's like, oh, I want to create websites. And I want to do it for a living, but you have no idea how to build a website. If you are doing a crappy website and say, oh, come give me money, I will build your website. Everyone will be like, why we should give money to this guy? But if you take the time, create an awesome website for you because you like it, then people will come and say, oh, I want the same website as you. I mean, it works exactly in the same way as security. Do it because you like it. Learn a lot. You will find valuable bug. Then report them. You will get private invites. And honestly, there is money to make even on public bug bounty. Uh, it's a... Uh, it's uh, even on a public program, many people say, oh, we want to go on private program. They are obviously private program where it's easier because uh, sometimes it's a fresh program and they made some mistake, they forget vulnerability. But you look at very large public bug bounty and you still have people who are on 20K from an XSS on the login page. So they are vulnerability, they are everywhere uh, and you will find it. But if you just stop uh, after two hours, um, that's normal, it's a real job. I mean, uh, you have automated tool who have been uh, before you, you have penetration tester who look for vulnerability before the bug hunter. So if you arrive and you say, oh, I don't have any skill, but uh, I want to be millionaire just finding bugs, it, it will not work like that. But do it as a side hustle. Do it because you like it. And you will start to earn money. You, the money will be there, but by itself. And you will not, uh, the question will not, oh, how much I could earn. If you are just doing it for the money today, honestly, do something else. Because uh, it's very hard. Uh, it's not that hard, but if you just focus on the, on the output, short-term output, it, it doesn't work. Many bug hunters, they are doing it for, for many months, at least. So you are competing against them. So and some people for 20 years, 10 years, they are doing IT security. You are competing against this kind of people. You will find vulnerability, don't worry. Um, and you will earn money, but don't skip the step. That's it. So you learn to crawl before running and, uh, and then you walk and then you run.
And that's really the way it works. Sure, and Mohan, what do you have to add? Yeah, so I think what Kevin is trying to say is uh, have patience, uh, you know. Uh, yes, uh, Bug Bounty has money. Uh, it, it has lots of money, okay. But uh, as he rightly pointed out, there are a lot of people who have joined this bandwagon uh, quite early, right? And you may be joining now. So you're competing with uh, really very competent, uh, experienced folks. So when that is the uh, reality, then uh, you, know, you need to be consistent. Uh, you may not get uh, low hanging fruits also because they would be easily picked up by some other folks earlier than you. In such case, it is important to uh, you know, uh, keep consistency, have patience, and go deep uh, in certain areas. Uh, you know, bring that uh, speciality in you, uh, so that uh, you know you get called in uh, the private programs. And once you are recognized as specialist, uh, definitely there is a better scope uh, for getting uh, included in uh, you know uh, the private programs. Also, uh, you know you end up getting more money. So money will come. But only thing is, uh, you need to have some patience and show consistency and growth, you know, in your learning, in your practicing. And if the, all these things work out, you would definitely make uh, good money. But um, yeah, it takes time, you know, uh, and uh, what is important is not to give up in, in the whole uh, journey, right? Just because, uh, you know, you earn something now and then for six to eight months, there's no earning, then uh, it doesn't mean that they will not be earning in future. But if instead, in those six to eight months, if you're able to practice something, uh, you know, uh, be an expert in a certain area, you will definitely start earning uh, more money later. So how patience, yeah. Sure, thanks so much. So basically, I think that you should have the mindset of a security researcher rather than, you know, like a bug bounty hunter, which is like, oh, I'm going hunting every day. Yeah. It's more like a, a mindset of somebody who's researching stuff. And another thing I talking to you, I realized was that if you are somebody new and you are interested in a cybersecurity career, this is a great place to start because now you are going in depth into technologies, you're going in depth into different things. And you know what, at some time you may feel that, oh, this is not for me. However, I am more interested in, in pursuing a certain um, a, a certain technology and, and I want like, maybe I want to become like an IT auditor, right? because you've gone through all these things, you've looked for what to do and like vulnerabilities in a website. You So you could go into some ancillary career. Maybe you are now interested in developing something, right? You want to be a developer and not like a, but I think it's a great, great path to start where you explore different technologies. You are going through, uh, putting through, putting you through that learning because what I've seen is like Mohan and Kevin, and uh, me, we are lifelong learners, which is the basis of any cybersecurity career. If you want to be good, you need to really love what you do. And another thing is that you have to be interested and curious in learning new things. If you don't have that, then probably this is not like a pathway for you at all. Um, having said that, Kevin, um, I want to now explore um, the, how do you responsibly uh, report a vulnerability. So now the question is that uh, is there a way to report vulnerabilities outside of these bug bounty programs? And uh, can I get into trouble? Uh, because it's so easy, right? Whenever you start, you've got these tools and you start like, mm -hmm. and, and from my thing, I, I can tell you 100% there is a way to like quickly go to prison. But I want you to like uh, show us. Uh, and uh, what if I come across some kind of proprietary data in the course of my security research? Is, is it possible? And how would you handle that? What kind of advice would you give people? Okay. Uh, my first advice is, uh, especially for responsible disclosure, uh, I think all the websites should have responsible disclosure policy. On a, each website should each company should have a proper way to report vulnerability. But today, that's not the case. Uh, that's a reality. M most of the web they are company or website, they don't have a responsible disclosure policy. So if they don't have one, 
first, uh, I would say you should not look for vulnerability on this kind of website because you can end up in jail, basically. Um, at some point, if you want to practice, um, you should go on Bug Bounty where you have, uh, I would say, uh, a permit, uh, you are allowed to find vulnerability. If it happens that because you are curious, because you become an hacker, basically, and I say in, in a very uh, positive way, you know, hacker is someone who is trying to find bugs, who is looking at it. And I don't know, you are on your bank account and you say, oh, I want to look around just because you learn many things. Understand what you are doing. Really understand what you are doing. And because you are still, it's like someone who like the lock picking on the way to, to open lock. You can love doing lock picking, but at some point, if you are going in your neighborhood and you try to open all the door and you enter, and you can be prosecuted. Uh, it's not legal to do that. So there is a thin line on really be careful. If you want to practice, I will advise you just go where it's allowed and where everyone is fine with that. Don't try your luck with uh, any banks, any company, because you will be in trouble. If you find a vulnerability, you can go uh, on. They don't have um, a vulnerability disclosure. Go with a CERT, a computer emergency response team. Uh, use a third party. Be anonymous, report the vulnerability. And just because you want to do something good, don't expect reward. Vulnerability disclosure is a passive way to collect vulnerability. It's not, bug bounty is active. And I would say it's not even normal for a bug hunter to find a vulnerability and not being paid for that. So as long as they don't have a public bug bounty, don't expect any reward, don't expect money, and don't ask money. Because if you start asking money, uh, it can become extortion. Like, oh, I find uh, you leak your whole database, uh, give me money, or I, will, uh, or I will disclose it. No, you, you open the door of someone, you find something, and now you're asking money. It doesn't work like that. Um, it's a big mistake that many guys were beginning in bug bounty because you feel the power and you say, oh, I'm able to really act company. But right. what you do is not legal. So really be careful with that. And on top of that, if you start contacting company and asking money for vulnerability, you find, and they didn't ask anything, it's like you open the door of your neighborhood, you steal his wallet, and then you say, oh, uh, your door was not locked properly. Give me money and I will give you back your wallet. And this is exactly what you are doing. So really be careful of that. Do it in good faith. If it's a vulnerability disclosure program, don't ask for reward. Don't ask for anything. Um, this is how it works. If you want money, go on the bond because these people, they are ready to pay. And that's it. So that's uh, to sum up. You find a vulnerability by accident. You report it to a computer emergency response team by a third party who is able to handle this kind of vulnerability. If the company has a vulnerability disclosure policy, report the vulnerability, but don't expect anything. If you want to work actively and try really to hack a company, go in a company to a company with a bug bounty program. That's it. Sure. And uh, th this is really good advice. And, and what you said was um, very true that suppose you are learning how to pick a lock, doesn't mean that you go around, you know, your neighbor uh, neighborhood and try it out because that will be like, uh, it's first thing, it's not ethical at the second time. Uh, second thing is that it is criminal. So it will get you. So people's production websites are not fair game. Do not try to, you know, uh, point your tools and start like uh, some kind of a, um, might be like a, even a DOS attack or something, but uh, don't do it. So now this brings us to, uh, I, I, I know now what, like what I require, right? Do I need like certifications? We spoke about that. 
Do I need some kind of formal education? We spoke about that. What kind of career choices do I have before and after along with, right? You could, you could have this bug bounty as, as a hobby kind of a thing when you're learning stuff and you can very well transition into different careers, even if suppose you find that this is uh, not something for you, or if you find that this is something for you, you can join, join different uh, companies as a penetration testers. Thank you so much, Mohan and uh, uh, Kevin for uh, your insight. And, and this, was, this was really good. Learned a lot from this talk with both of you. Um, now, now, like if, if people are interested in security, cybersecurity careers, please join this group. This is a group called uh, Cybersecurity Career Meetup and uh, make sure, so we are, we are bringing in different people uh, who, who can talk about different opportunities, learn about different networking events. We are planning to, I'm planning to put together like a resume workshop because a lot of people had asked for it. Uh, and if you are signed up, you will definitely get uh, um, notice and alerts about this. Next week, uh, we have uh, three people from Netrograd, that is Adriel Desaltels, uh, uh, Felipe, and uh, we've got like Jason E. Street, Jason E. Street. Uh, if you have not followed him on, on Twitter or go check him out, uh, they are going to talk about, uh, with us about how to become a hacker. And I'm not going to like give it all away right now, but um, it's going to be an interesting talk. So please do join us at that time and uh, see you next time. Um, if you see like a little red button, say subscribe, I don't know, you throw a bug at it or whatever else and make sure that you click it. And uh, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.